Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Zilan with Hunger Relief International here today to provide an update on COVID-19 and Haiti. Uh, we are all hoping uh, our whole HRI family and team that you and your family and friends and neighbors are taking necessary precautions, staying safe and healthy in your own lives. And now what we would like to do is to share with you the wonderful work that HRI is continuing to do in the face of upcoming tragedy in Haiti with COVID-19 and the spread. So I'd like to introduce Jodel Pierre, HRI Country Director in Haiti, to give us an update. Uh, Jodel, could you start with an update on the general situation in Haiti right now with the coronavirus? Yes, Michelle. Um, everything is a little bit under control because we only have uh, 25 cases. Um, cases in Haiti, but the situation is probably worse than what officially they are saying because, you know, um, people usually don't protect themselves in Haiti and uh, they usually don't believe in these type of diseases unless they see that some relatives, friends and, and parents are dying. So it will be very complicated for us in the coming days because uh, it is difficult for them to take appropriate measures to protect themselves as uh, they don't have uh, like necessary supplies to do that mostly. And uh, you know, it's a poor country. I, we started our um, prevention and also some training regarding how to um, to manage the COVID-19. Let me ask you a question, Jodel. Is is there widespread testing yet in Haiti, or is it just a few cases being tested, and so there really is not uh, a well-known uh, or a good handle on the number of cases right now in your country? Uh, the thing is, uh, we don't have sufficient tests to test everybody, and they are using the PCR method. So um, we are expecting um, that some of the tests will arrive, but you know, uh, again, we are very limited in terms of um, tests. Great. Well. That's sort of been everybody's challenge is, is getting tests and then getting people tested. Um, uh, let me ask you a question. I know a lot of people are very interested in what is happening in the orphanages and uh, what we are doing to help ensure that the children living in these facilities are not, uh, are not exposed to COVID-19. Can you fill us in a little bit on that? Yes. Um... From our side, we plan ahead of time because we knew that uh, this would be happening. And two weeks before the government announced the first two official cases in Haiti, um, we purchased and distributed the food in the orphanages. We made sure that they have sufficient water and we, will, we continue to provide them regular, um, regular um, water and food. And uh, our nurse is working on preparing some small kits with uh, multivitamins and also um, basic medicines. Um, we are also conducting some specific wash associated to the COVID-19 because we used to do wash before, but this is very specific to COVID-19 right now. And also we have our social worker working on the psychosocial aspect because you know, with the confinement, they will be having trouble staying um, inside of the, of the orphanage only, not going outside to school and also to play. So we have had a lot of um, activities going on to help them manage this um, very um, specific situation. Yes, and it's really quite terrifying as well, I'm sure, for kids and, and adults who don't really understand what's going on um, to deal with it. So that's just another reason for uh, the extra psychosocial support. And it's great that the nurse is getting out there and working with the staff and the kids 
Um, one thing, uh, an interesting question, uh, do you think if it, it, it's necessary to provide the staff of the different orphanages with, with masks, since they are the only ones coming and going every day, is that something that we would consider important to protect the children? Yes, uh, we are working on the on this aspect too, and uh, we have the families that we are supporting through our Children First program that we will be receiving training on how to uh, to make their own mask, and also we are working on an initiative to provide them with the uh, equipment and tools so that they can uh, make masks to sell in their neighborhood and also um, to distribute. For, to um, the orphanage leaders so that they, they, they don't get infected and don't infect the kids in the orphanage. So we are working on this aspect because we don't want only to provide them with, uh, with support, but we want that support to be sustainable too. And in this um, particular situation, they can generate some income. Yes, the, 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 the people who make them, that we work with can generate income. The staff of orphanages can uh, protect themselves and mostly protect the children since they are the ones most exposed. And, um, and our nurse will do some great training and has been. So that's great. Now, let's talk a little bit about what is going on um, in, in the communities. I will tell you here in the United States, a very disturbing phenomenon, phenomenon has, has come to light just yesterday. And that is that low income minority populations tend to be most affected um, by the virus. And this is in large part due to uh, the fact that they don't have reliable access to nutritious food. Generally, uh, food is quite expensive. They have underlying, more underlying health conditions uh, because of you know, where they live and, and the fact that they are so low income. The, the families that we're dealing with in Haiti live essentially in extremely densely populated areas. They are extremely low income. They have little access to food. So um, this is going to make them a, the most vulnerable to the coronavirus. So tell us a little bit about what HRI is doing in light of these huge challenges to try to help these populations that are, are really going to be affected tremendously and may already be. Yeah, yeah. So the, the thing with HRI is that we are working in the slum, Delmas 32 and 40 b And as people may know that the slums are overcrowded with with people living, which is a very good opportunity for the for the virus to spread rapidly, quickly, and to infect a lot of people at the same time. So, um, for that reason, we have put in place a specific um, pro training program with the parents that we are supporting in our Children First program. So the the objective is like to equip them so that they can become ambassadors in their community. When we say ambassadors, is that they are receiving training on wash and also on how to proactively like take care of their kids and entertain them at the time of confinement. So they are receiving a training of trainer training so that they can train other people in the community on how to wash their hands and also on how to keep their kids healthy at home and to keep their family um, united and avoiding like um, dispute in the house, creating problems for the kids and dealing with the stress and the trauma created uh, um, by the COVID-19. One of the main important aspects in Haiti, because you know, people are low literate and they don't, like, they don't have the opportunity to uh, analyze information that they are receiving, is the stigma created by this virus so uh, in some in some areas of Haiti when when you have this uh, virus people want to kill you so that is happening also in in some area in Port Prince 
So one of the most important aspects of our training right now is uh, to train the people in the communities how to deal with the stigma associated to, uh, to the COVID-19. Because what is happening now, as soon as you are infected, you are in danger because people around, if they know that you are infected, will try to kill you. So we are training the parents so that they can um, spread out the message, the information, and uh, help people um, support um, infected people instead of trying to kill them. Because it is really important, and this will be putting the whole country into great danger if somebody is sick and afraid of calling the MSPP or saying that um, he is sick. So we are training the parents so that they can go to the community and talk to people and create like a type of support group um, so that when somebody is infected, they can deal with that together and provide necessary assistance. That's excellent, Jodell. Um, a lot of good work is done through creating support groups and of course, educating people, making sure they understand this is not something that is affecting a small group of people, but this is affecting everybody. It doesn't care your age. It doesn't care your color. It doesn't care your economic uh, status. It doesn't care about your level of education. Every single person in this world is affected by this virus. Some will live, most will live, but some will not. And the goal here is to prevent the spread and save as many lives as we can. You're doing a terrific job in Haiti. The team is doing an outstanding job. Um, I'd like to thank you for sharing it, uh, sharing this update. And let's plan to do this again in a week or so and let people know where we are and how our program is progressing. Uh, so thanks so much and thank you all for watching and taking the time to learn about what HRI is doing in Haiti to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and to save lives.